Hello, ladies and gents! After checking with you guys on Twitter over the past days, which tank should be next on the list for the ACID series, the T-34-100 seemed to be among the more popular choices, so I obeyed, and here we are. Now this medium tank is definitely among the less popular tier 7 choices, and with good reason too, all of which will be explored during my ace tanker gameplay in this machine a little bit later. Now if you want to skip right away to the action, just hit that timestamp in the description below. Otherwise, the history of this tank will be a rather short one, as it never existed in reality. As the name also suggests, this was actually a planned upgrade on the T-3485 Soviet medium tank design, which was actually already an upcount version of the original T-34. These plans were made a good 10 years after the Second World War ended, by which time the T-3485 was already outdated, envisioning a 100mm gun on the machine. Production never started though, and the designs were in the end scrapped for good. Now jumping over to the armor profile of this steel beast, unfortunately there is nothing beastly about these numbers. The tier 7 medium tanks are not known for their crazy armor in the first place, and the T-34-100 is even more lightly armored compared to that standard. The hull is a completely laughable 45mm of sloped armor all around, which from the front is completely rubbish, but at least on the side it's at least capable to side scrape against those 122mm Soviet guns. The turret isn't really much better to be honest. Behind the gun mantlet you have about 160mm of armor, which at tier 7 isn't that much to begin with, while the cheeks of the tanks have on both sides only about 100mm worth of armor, and just in case there is also a quite prominent cupola on top, that you can go through easily with 90mm of penetration. Really, unless you are engaging lower tiered opponents, you have to hope that the enemies will hit the size of the turret which are auto ricochet zones, otherwise it's good by half. And with that not too promising finish, let's jump into the gameplay and see what this T-34-100 is really about. Alright, so here we are in our T-34-100, this time around in a standard battle on airfield. Now before we start to look at the details of this Czechoslovakian tier 7 medium tank, let's just have a look at what we got ourselves into and, well, it doesn't really look great, does it? We are one of the very few tier 7 machines in the match, most of the enemies we will face will be tier 8, and there are even 3 tier 9 enemies that we have really have to worry about, so yeah, we definitely have our work cut out for us. Now, that said, the playstyle won't really change for this machine because this is true and true a support tank, which would play more or less exactly in the same fashion, facing a lot lower tiered opponents as well. But, as we get ourselves into a rather laid back position, waiting to see if the enemies will push on the east this time as well as they lately seem to do, let's start the comparison. How does the T-34-100 actually go against the other tier 7 mediums? Basically we can compare this tank mostly against the T-20, tier 7 American medium tank, and the T-34-1, the Chinese tier 7 medium. All three of these tanks are relatively mobile support tanks that have a rather punchy gun, but limited DPM. Now what this means is that these guys simply just can't fight their way out of fire. If you can use them well, however, the on average 175mm of penetration and 250 average damage per shot will stack up quite nicely over time. What I tend to find with my T20 for example is, I'm able to do quite a bit of damage, even if I'm not able to do it quickly. Comparing the DPM details of this machine, this thing actually has a quite decent rate of fire compared to the other two. We are able to put out, at base, a shot every 8 seconds, while the T-34-1 and the T-20 
have to wait about a second longer after each shot before they can pull the trigger. Now this means we have a relatively significant advantage in terms of DPM, which I didn't really appreciate when I first played my Constructor, but then again I didn't have the comparison to do so. At the same time though, the gun is certainly not one of the strongest. The 2.3 second aim time is not bad on it, as is the 0.36 meters accuracy, especially if we compare it to the T-34-1 which has 2.8 seconds aim time and 0.4 meters dispersion. However, before we start to feel really good about ourselves, let's just consider that the T-20 has better aim time, the same accuracy, better dispersion, and that tank can use vertical stabilizers, while the T-34-100 can't. So that means we will have to sit there for quite a bit aiming up those shots. And that can be a little bit of a problem, if we want to play a more active role. If we are getting lucky with our shots like that, well, that certainly helps. Now something else that's a little bit annoying, or actually quite a bit annoying about the gun is that we only have 5 degrees of gun depression. Again, the T20 has doubled than that, and I have to say this is probably the worst medium in this comparison again compared to the other three, because while the T34-1 has 5 degrees as well, that thing has a much much smaller silhouette, so you are sitting closer to the ground to begin with, and that means that the gun depression is not as punishing. If you try to use it, this thing on a ridge line, it can get really really tricky really really fast. We already discussed that the armor on it is pretty much negligible. What about the mobility? Well, we have a quite good top speed at 54 km per hour. However, our power to weight ratio is the weakest of the three once again, about 15.4 horsepower per ton, which is not great. At least we have quite decent terrain resistances. Still, overall, I would say once again the T20 takes the prize in that regard as well. So overall, T34-100. As long as you don't try to do something with it that it's really not good at, and try to stick to a supporting role for most of the match, you actually will have a decent time with it. You just really have to learn the locations which you have to avoid because, well, your gun depression just simply will make it useless. If you can avoid getting too much attention and love from the enemy team, the rate of fire, combined with the punchy nature of the gun, can actually bring you a rather sweet result. And if you are able to do that reliably, about 2000 damage per game should be able to achieve really similar to what I can get in the T20 as well. However, once you get in the center of attention... Oh boy! <laughs> yeah! This thing is definitely not bulletproof. Well, that said, not many would have survived a side shot from an M443. Bloody hell! Outplayed by artillery. And to end the sad little review, on a low point as well, of course the artillery goes ahead and drowns itself. What a scumbag move. So, this was then my ace in the T-34-100. Might not have been a very exciting match, but it's situations like these where this machine really thrives. Put it in a position where it can unload without putting it too much in the spotlight, and where the gun depression isn't too disturbing, and put that quite alright DPM to good use. But back to the results. 2300 direct and 1700 assisted damage is not bad at all for a tier 7, and we even managed to get us a Levis Lyos medal, one of the rarer medals for taking out two opponents at least two tiers higher than us while driving a medium tank. Looking at the team results, as an exciting it might have been, we actually ended up on top by damage done, kill secured and XP earned as well. 
The T-34-100 is just not the right machine for those crazy plays, at least not most of the time. And last but not least we fire 13 shots, hitting 12 of them and penetrating 10. And despite getting obliterated by the dastardly artillery at the end, even with the repair costs this was a nice 34,000 credit net profit run using a premium account. Alright, this was then our quick look at the T-34-100. Certainly not one of the top choices at tier 7, but it's not as completely hopeless as most would think. I hope you found this little video useful, or at least entertaining, and if you did, thanks a lot for considering giving this a like or sharing it. Now tomorrow we will close the week with another high explosive RNG selection with the latest Arty Party Funny Moment special, and over the weekend you can watch two very special replays, as voted by you guys on our latest Facebook poll, featuring an M53 M55 artillery going on an 8 kill rampage with a close 1 vs 3 finish, and on Sunday it's some dirty fun time, with a Panzer B2 engaging in a 1 vs 10 situation. Or will it? I guess you will have to wait and see. As for myself, however, let me already wish you an excellent weekend. Thank you very much for watching everyone, and I look forward to seeing you again in one of the next videos.